That would make a couple of interesting experiments. Hi, I have a book here called The Physics and Technology of Tennis. And if you're a tennis geek, it's an excellent resource. It was published a while back in 2002. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out. In chapter 33, it talks about consistency and attention to detail regarding string jobs. Now the goal of a quality string job is not to match the reference tension that you set on your stringing machine, but it's to match the string bed stiffness produced by the reference tension. What's cool about this section is that I featured two of the four things mentioned in this section. And I'll leave the links down below for consistent tensioning and streamline technique and clamp speed technique. So now let's get into the two experiments. In this first experiment, it's all about the pull angle, which refers to the angle the tension head makes with the pulled string. Depending on the string that you're pulling as it comes out of the grommet, it bends at a certain angle as it enters the tension head. I strung the same racket twice. First, I strung it with the natural angle that stringers typically use. Then a second time with a straightened angle where I positioned the racket so each string would be pulled as straight as possible. Now the purpose for this is to reduce the amount of varying tensions due to the varying bending and the friction that it's causing. You'll notice here that I'm measuring the number of degrees as I adjust each string in a straight line. All right, so let's take a look at some readings in this experiment. And the reference tension that I went with was 50 pounds. And the three readings that I took was a dynamic tension measured by the ERT300. And then I converted that into string tension and the string bed deflection using my Babolat RDC. All right, so I strung two rackets, one with the nylon strings, which is print synthetic gut. And I strung the racket first with the natural angle. And again, that's how you would normally string a racket where the string comes out of the grommet and whatever angle that string came out of the grommet, uh, it goes into the tension head then pulled. So I have the three readings here with the uh, dynamic tension, string tension, and the string bed deflection. So when I did the second stringing, I cut off the strings because I wanted to make sure that I was using the same exact racket and um, the straightened angle. I have here that the, uh, the measurements, that, measurements that I was taking range from zero to 20 degrees. So let's take a look at the readings going across here. And you could see that the dynamic tension matched up. Of course, the string tension is gonna match up. And the string bed deflection was one unit lower. All right, so here's a second string that I used. It was a polyester string, the Luxalon original Big Banger in a 16 gauge. And I strung the racket with the natural angle. And then I straightened it out. And both of these rackets, uh, they were the same kind of racket, but I used the same racket for this, this string and the same racket for this string. And you could see that the, uh, the readings here. So let's compare the two here. So on this one here, the dynamic tension did come out one uh, unit higher. And of course that's gonna come out a pound higher here. And the string bed deflection did come out one unit higher. So in this case, it did, uh, prove that a straightened angle uh, may have affected the, sh um, the tension and the string bed stiffness. Now in their test, uh, they did uh, three tensions and I'm not sure what kind of strings they used, but what they did is they did one at 60, one at 50 and one at 42. And on the average, it made a difference between one to three pounds. So it's not significant, but you could see that um, in the case of the polyester it did on the synthetic gut, it really didn't, uh, it wasn't a factor. So although some stringers may lock the machine's turntable to achieve a straight pull, there's no significant difference, at least in this experiment, between the, the natural angle and the straightened angle. However, even if the string bed stiffness was higher using the straightened angle method, the goal was not to match the reference tension of 50 pounds, but the real goal is to duplicate the str same string bed stiffness that the player likes over and over. So whether you use the natural or straightened angle, you want to make sure that you're always consistent. In my second experiment, it took me two days to complete where I strung two rackets twice. And the reason for this is uh, it was to see if the ambient temperature affects the string tension in any way. 
According to the book, at higher temperatures, molecules move more easily relative to each other, accelerating the creep curve, and at lower temperatures, it slows down. So on day one, I strung the rackets in my shop where the air conditioning was set uh, running like usual at a room temperature kept at about 74 degrees. On day two, I restrung both rackets outside the shop using the same machine. You can see that I'm under some shade there and the day was slightly overcast, but the outside ambient temperature was 88 degrees. I was actually debating if I should string out in the sun just to see how it would be uh, even in a hotter uh, environment. But uh, I thought this would be the perfect scenario to replicate what some tournament stringers must endure when stringing at tournaments. All right, so let's take a look at the readings that I did within this 12 hour period. And I went with a reference tension of 50. And for each of the readings that I took at these intervals, you'll see that I have three columns for a dynamic tension. And I converted that into pounds. So I was using the ERT 300. And if you're curious about an ERT 300, I have a link down below so you can check that out. And the Babolat RDC measures string bed deflection. All right, so let's take a look at the first racket that I strung, which was with the uh, print synthetic gut. And when I strung it indoors, it was at 74 degrees. And again, we're going to pay attention more to this yellow column here because that's the uh, pounds that uh, the measurement that I took, which came out in pounds. So the initial was at 47. After six hours, it dropped to 44. And this uh, percentage is the amount uh, based on this compared to this number. And then 12 hours later, it dropped even more down to 42. So that's at 11%. So that looks kind of normal there. But when I took that same racket outdoors and I restrung it, uh, it didn't turn out the way I expected. Uh, this uh, initial reading came out lower, which was expected according to the book. And then it dropped here at 42, so that made sense. And then it kind of stabilized. It actually stayed at 42 here. So you could see that uh, it did drop more here and then when it got to 12, the 12 hour period, this one stayed at 9%, whereas this one dropped a couple more percentage uh, points there. For the second racket, I strung with polyester strings and I used the same, uh, the Luxalon Original Big Banger 16. And indoors, let's take a look at the readings here. So it started off at 44, it dropped to 41, and then it stayed at 41. And so that came out with a 7% um, uh, tension loss, which does make sense here because you, you would think that the polyester would lose more tension. But then when it came to the 12 hour period, this one actually stayed at 7% and then this one dropped to 11. But let's take a look at what the outdoor readings reveal here. So this was kind of strange. The, uh, the reading that I got outdoors, my initial came out higher than the indoor one. And when it came to here, it did drop, but you know, it's still higher because of the fact that it started off higher. So we had a 9% drop here. And then like the indoor reading uh, here, this one stabilized at 9%. So you could see that the outdoor reading uh, actually came out a little higher. So I'm not sure what to make out of that. But um, again, this was just these two strings specifically and in the conditions that I strung them in. Now, when I strung it outside at 88 degrees, I did have to eventually store the rackets uh, in my storage room, which was outside, and it did drop down to 84 degrees. So, um, you know, that, that's why there's a range here. I guess if I had followed the book's guidelines for their experiment, I may have had different results. I don't know what kind of string they used, but the racket they strung was at 70 pounds and the ambient temperatures were at 45 and 105 degrees. So I guess here in Hawaii, I could go to the top of Mauna Kea and string at 45 degrees there. I'm not sure where I can string at 105 degrees, but if any of you want to conduct this experiment, please let me know what your results are. In summary, tension loss is a natural behavior for all racket strings. The key to a consistent string job is a stringer's behavior. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.